Oh my God, we're getting evacuated. I just got to knock at the door. I'm at a campground. The fire, the big wildfire is only five miles away and we have to go. Oh my God, I got to get packed up. This is nuts. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to mind your own. Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. That really happened a few days ago. I have a whole video for you because I was recording the campground I was in because it was such a lovely campground, but I was really close to the Cerro Palado fire in uh, near Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'd been watching the smoke come over the ridge for a few days, but uh, I was told that it wouldn't cross over into the campground, but we got evacuated. I had to leave. That got me thinking that I need to arm myself with more information about what to do in case of wildfires. Wildfires are becoming more and more of a fact of life, a reality for everyone who is in the west side of the United States, west of the Miss yeah, west of the Mississippi. And for those of us who are residential vehicle dwellers, whether we live in an RV or a van, many of us boondocking on public lands, that puts an extra element of danger for us. I did a video a couple months ago about how to prepare for uh, emergencies, weather emergencies. I didn't talk about wildfire because I didn't really know how to talk about it. Now I do because I have been doing research. I have been trying to find tools and apps and resources that'll help me safely travel on public lands without getting caught in a wildfire. So I'm going to share with you today what I've learned. I'm going to give you resources. I'm going to give you tips. I'm going to give you information information about how you can still boondock safely in national forests, that's where most of the fires are, without having to worry, either not having to worry about getting caught in a wildfire or being prepared or knowing when to go. I'm going to cover all of that today. I have a lot of information to share with you, so let's get started. I'm going to start with more practical how-tos, and then I'm going to talk about a couple of apps that I have found that are extremely helpful in these situations. I have four tips, and then I've got some apps. Number one, the biggest thing I can tell you is if there is a wildfire, I'm going to say within a hundred miles of where you want to camp, do not go off grid. You have to have a cell signal because a cell signal is going to give you access to the information that you need to track the fire. Unfortunately, what comes with these crazy out of control fires are crazy, heavy, strong winds. I was reading about the the progress of this Cerro Palado fire and the winds were literally like shifting every minute. One minute it's going this way, the next minute. So the winds have been just out of control crazy. Anybody who's been traveling in, I think, Arizona, I think even Utah and New Mexico recently have experienced the crazy. I mean, I, I did a video recently. What were they? 85 mile an hour gusts. It's crazy. Things are changing. And uh, got some more thoughts on that for another video. But if you're going to be within 100 miles, I say 100 miles because of the winds, because they can travel fast. You don't want to be off grid. You don't want to be without a cell signal, without uh, access to emergency alerts. You need a cell phone. You need it on. You need your location turned on. You need your GPS turned on. You need to be able to access information and be notified in case there is an emergency alert. So do not go off grid where you don't have a cell signal. Absolutely, positively, don't do that. 100 miles. I think 100 miles is realistic because of the, of the speed at which wildfires can travel in some of these crazy winds that we're having. And don't take for granted, oh, the wind is coming from the southwest. So as long as I'm north, uh, so as long as I'm southwest of the fire, I'm fine. Don't take that for granted because the winds can shift on a dime. You just, you just don't know. Tip number two, know where you are. I know that sounds silly, but a lot of times, you know, I, I explore Cibola National Forest, Santa Fe National Forest, uh, Comanche National Forest, whatever national forest I'm in. Sometimes I explore the forest 
I end up driving 20 miles on forest roads and and I find a spot and I'm like, okay, this is good. And I don't necessarily know exactly where I am. Know the closest towns. This is going to be critical. So when I was evacuated from the campground, what they told me, it was five o'clock Sunday night. What they told me it, the the camp host came around and knocked on everybody's door. He said, we have to evacuate tomorrow. They're evacuating the town, which is uh, Cochiti, was the town. It's Cochiti Lake is where I was. And uh, they said they're evacuating the town tomorrow. He said, but people are leaving now. And I was wondering, people were packing up around me. It's five o'clock. It's kind of late for people to be packing up. And he said, people are leaving now. And I'm like, I didn't want to leave. You know, I wanted to wait until the next day because I still had work to do. And he was just like, yeah, people are packing up. I was like, well, should, can I stay? And he's like, I wouldn't. He said, they're evacuating the town and roads might be blocked, might be clogged. There might be a lot of traffic because everybody in town is going to be trying to get out tomorrow. So that is when I learned it is really important, especially if you're in the middle of a forest Know the closest town. Nobody's going to come around in the forest probably and knock on your door if you're boondocking and tell you you need to go. It's another thing. You might want to stay in a campground if you can't like escape the fire. Nobody's going to drive around the forest and tell you to go. I I don't think so. Unless you're in a really populated area. um, But if you're more remote, nobody's going to come and knock on your door. So know the nearest towns, preferably on all sides of you. And... Call the town, look at the town website, look at the town fire department, know what the emergency alert system looks like for that town. Because what's going to happen if the fire gets close, like it did for me, they're going to put evacuation orders on the town, the village, whatever it is. Okay, so know the town that you're close to. And I'm going to get to tracking the fire here in a minute and information about specific fires. But know the town and call the town if you have to. Call City Hall. Call the Chamber of Commerce. Whoever you can get a hold of and say, hey, what kind of emergency alert systems do you have in place in town for fire evacuations? And they'll tell you. Usually I would call like City Hall, but they might be hard to get through. I bet the Chamber of Commerce could tell you too. Um you know, what's in place? Who can I call? Where can I get information? Can I sign up for alerts? That's another great thing. If you're in an area that has telephone alerts, find out how you can sign up for those alerts. I tried doing it in Santa Fe. It's a little hard if you don't live there. Like I had to say that I was homeless basically. Um, But you can sign up for alerts in a lot of the towns and you'll get a text alert if there's an emergency in that area. Don't count on that. Make sure you know like just just be very proactive like don't sign up for an alert and then assume you're going to get an alert be proactive keep your eye out if you're pretty close to a fire if it's getting closer um keep an eye out because i said don't go off grid if you're within 100 miles but you might camp within 20 miles or 30 miles that fire can be on your back door in a day so be proactive no what towns are close by, what kind of emergency alert you might get. And if a town is evacuated, if you see an an evacuation order for a town that you're near, go. Don't question it. Don't wait. Don't second guess it. You're probably going to be out in the forest, mostly by yourself. Nobody's going to come and tell you to go. If you see that a town near you is being evacuated, go you know and especially because you're in the forest if the town if they if they say like that i they did in my case okay we're evacuating tomorrow and you're in the woods by yourself go now go now period so uh another thing that you can do is look up the local fire station uh of the the town nearest you look up the fire station don't call them because they're probably going to be very busy but look at their website i'm noticing a lot of the communication for fires is happening on facebook fire stations fire control center command centers and things like that um have facebook groups and you can go there and they're posting regular updates they're having city meetings so that's the other thing these cities that are in the line of fire and might be threatened by these big wildfires are having meetings with the fire services the fire the firefighters the national forest fighters 
whatever they are. They're having regular meetings to discuss uh, plans for keeping their residents safe. So Facebook is often a great place to go to keep up to date on what's happening in the areas around you. And I'm going to tell you how to find those in a minute. Number three, my third um, tip for you is don't camp alone. If you're, especially if you're really close, I'd say within 30 miles, which is I think what I was when I first got to the campground. I think I was within 30 miles of the fire. Uh, I would not camp alone. In this case, you know I love my solitude. In this case, I will say there is safety in numbers. You just never know when someone else might have a ham radio, a CB radio, a friend in town. Someone close to you might have information that you don't have. They might have an alert that you don't have. And if you have other people around you and the forest needs to be evacuated, they might know before you do. So this is one time I will say, find other people, camp around other people if you're concerned that you might get wiped away in a in a fire or if you might have to be evacuated because of a fire. Another thing I want to say, one of my biggest concerns has been being in a fire that's just going to erupt out of nowhere. What did I read? 84 percent of wildfires are caused by humans. The rest are lightning strikes. Uh, I I think it's just lightning strikes, right? So 84% of wildfires are caused by humans. The the idea or the uh, the 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 chances of a wildfire just breaking out in your backyard, figuratively, right, where you're camped uh, overnight is is very slim. So I think the biggest concern, and I used to worry about that. It's like, oh, the winds are crazy and there's static cling everywhere and fire is just going to materialize out of nowhere and I'm going to be trapped. It's been a real concern of mine. That's probably not going to happen. The the worst, the biggest threat is an ongoing big wildfire. That doesn't mean that a wildfire can't spark 10 miles away from you uh, in the morning and you would have to go that day. That's not to say that can't happen, but I think the chances are bigger that a rapidly spreading, already existing fire is probably going to be a bigger threat. I could be wrong about that, but that's just kind of my thinking. The other thing is just be aware of your surroundings. Watch. Get up every day, every night. Watch. Is there smoke in the air? Where's it coming from? If you suddenly see smoke in the air, either get out depending on how close it is and how bad it is, or go to your resources and see where the fire is. And I'm going to give you a resource here in a minute that's really good for that. So camp with other people. Don't camp alone. Number four, make a plan. Make sure you are prepared ahead of time. You don't want to get in a situation where you have to evacuate and you're frazzled because you don't know how to get out, what roads you came in on and uh, how bumpy are they? Do you have to go through fences and gates and all kinds of things to get out? And do you have to rock climb and, you know, dodge potholes? Have an evacuation plan. No, no matter where you are this time of year, if you are on public lands west of the Mississippi, every new spot you have, you need to have an evacuation plan. Know how you came in. More importantly, know an alternate route out. I came in that way. What if that way is blocked? What's that way? I know that way is a dead end for me. (laughs) I only have one way out, really. Uh, You know, so that means I really need to pay attention to what's going on in that direction, right? Have an evacuation plan. If you're... If you've been in a spot a few days, the smoke is getting worse, the fire is kind of moving closer, you're you're thinking maybe you might want to move, pack up. You know, don't... I can pack up in five minutes. Literally, I can shove everything away, probably five or 10 minutes. If it takes you longer than that, you might want to not be set up like you're staying, you know, stash things away so you only have a few things to put away if you need to escape. Don't put your awning out so you don't have to mess with that. Uh, Don't put too much of your stuff out, you know, lawn chairs and rugs and things like that. If you're worried about leaving them behind, be ready to go. I think that's an important part of an evacuation plan. Know your escape route. It's also a really good idea to know you can find escape routes by 
looking at the towns that are close to you, most of them have emergency evacuation routes. So know those emergency evacuation routes. You might need to make your own emergency evacuation route from where you are to the town. You probably will. And then what's the emergency evacuation route from that town to get out of danger? Know, know your escape routes. Know the escape routes of the towns that you're going to be near. Because remember, there could be traffic jams. There could be really slow traffic. and uh, But it's really important to know how to get out if you need to and have alternate, alternate routes if necessary. So those are my four biggest tips for preparing, for knowing about your surroundings, for tracking any danger, for relying on resources of the towns, townships, villages, whatever around you to be able to alert you in a situation where you might need to go. Because again, Smokey Bear is not going to come knocking on your door telling you you need to go. So now some apps. I've got three different services and apps for you uh, that I think will be really, really helpful. Number one, did you know there's a FEMA app? F-E-M-A, the Federal Emergency, whatever it is. You can sign up on the FEMA app. You can download it on your Android or iPhone. And you can receive text or email alerts about emergencies like wildfires from local office of emergency management, from your local office of emergency management. So you can enter up to five locations and then you can change them too as you move. But that's a really good tool to have. You download the FEMA app, you know, okay, I got a town here, I, you know, Find the towns basically all around you and set up alerts for each of those towns. I'd, I'd suggest one north, one uh, west, one south, one east. That might have looked the opposite to you guys. Um, so yeah, so you can set up to five alerts for different locations and you can get text notifications in case of an emergency in your area. Again, don't rely on any one service especially if you've never used it before. Be proactive. Keep your eye out. Be diligent about checking websites and Facebook groups and fire trackers, which I'm going to get to here. The FEMA app also has timely information on wildfires, um, and you can learn about the alerts and warnings. There's a lot of really good information on the FEMA website and the FEMA app. So besides setting up your e your phone number for alerts, there's a lot of really good information there, as well as tools for developing plans and strategies for dealing with these emergency situations. The other one they suggest is the National Weather Service. Uh, you can set up alerts from, from the National Weather Service as well. They issue Fire Weather Watch when potentially dangerous fire weather conditions are possible. Oh, okay. So this I have this on my CLIME app, C-L-I-M-E, which is a uh, weather app I use. And one of the alerts I have on are fire weather alerts. And so I cons I'm con every day I get multiple alerts being in New Mexico the last couple months. That's just been the way it is. There are fire alerts like every day, extreme fire danger, low humidity, high winds, unstable environment, etc. So that's what the National Weather Service can also give you. So you can either use CLIMB or the National Weather Service to get updates about potentially dangerous weather conditions. It's not going to tell you where a fire is or how it's moving, but it'll give you the um, weather situation so that you can be on alert in case. That's another good t tool to have. Uh, another tool is fireweatheravalanche.org. This is a really, really great tool. This shows real-time maps of fires and other data, and it has layers that you can choose for things like smoke, lightning strikes. You can find weather stations. It's got a lot of really good information. It'll show you how big the fire is. It'll show you if it's growing. You can, there's an arrow, you can actually drill down to get current information about the fire, including how big it is, what the chances, the level of chance of containment is, the percentage, current percentage of containment, current weather conditions, what they expect the fire to do in the near future. Really, really good information. Uh, if you're going to be camped near a wildfire, I think this one, and I don't think it's an app, it's a website, 
fireweatheravalanche.org. I'm going to put links to everything in the video description for you. Uh, so there's going to be planning tools on this website. It's awesome. Uh, I have been using this one a lot to track the Cerro Palado fire to see what direction how it's growing, what direction it's been going and changing and, and all kinds of stuff. So really, really great resource, I think, for anybody, whether you're uh, living in an RV or not. The last resource I want to tell you about is ready.gov. And you can do ready.gov slash wildfires for wildfire specific information. It's a national service that has been put up to educate, prepare, respond, and mitigate disasters and emergencies. It, they have everything on there. They cover bio emergencies, weather emergencies, and fire emergencies. So you can go there for a lot of great resources. A lot of the resources I found for this video are there. More learning, more education. It can give you information about finding local alerts and information. So it's just a good resource to know about and probably to study. And besides all of these specific apps, I really think still one of the best resources and tools that we have is Google. If you go to these resources, these apps that I have given you and you're not quite getting what you're looking for, Google the name of the fire. Every fire has a name. Cerro Palado, there's the Buck something fire up on the northeast side of Santa Fe. Every fire is named. It makes it easy to talk about, easy to track, easy to provide information to communities who might be affected. So uh, know the name of the fire in your area and Google it. And when you do, you're going to see below like a map, I think it is, you're actually going to see a section that says click here or get local information and resources about this fire. You can click on that. That's where it might take you if there's Facebook groups for updates, evacuations, that'll tell you. So um, Google is always, you know, a, a best friend, in my opinion. You can learn so much from Google, and that's definitely a way to find local information about the fire or any emergency concern you might have. One more resource that I'll tell you about is SmokeyBear.com, and this isn't necessarily a resource to keep you safe in the moment or while you're boondocking on public lands, but it's a great resource for learning about wildfire. If you've ever been curious about how they spread, how they start, how they're managed, how forest services manage and try to mitigate the fire, extreme wildfire danger, there's a lot of really smoky bears got some good information. So go check that out if you're interested in learning. And it might be helpful to learn how they behave in different situations if you're going to be camped in forests and uh, maybe subjecting yourself to dangers of wildfire. So yeah, anybody who is uh, living in a vehicle and camping on public lands, this is definitely going to be something that is going to be hard to escape as the planet continues to warm. Unfortunately, it's a fact of life. Um, there's been wind here. There has been f f smoke. Oh, you know what? When I left that campground, I didn't even know this. So I was there three nights. I was hiking, walking around. I was watching the smoke. The first night I was there, the sky got really, really ugly, muddy, dark, dirty, ashy. It was bad. And, uh, it, but that was really only one night. It was really that bad. And then it started clearing out because the wind shifted. When I left, I grabbed a shirt that I had worn hiking. It smelled like smoke. I didn't even realize how bad the smoke was in the air. I, I, I caught myself. It wasn't that bad during the day. It was really bad at night. There were a couple of nights I went to bed and it just, it was, you could smell fire smoke in the air, but I was surprised that it was on my clothes. So yeah, it's just going to be a reality for so many of us who choose to live west of the Mississippi. And I'm thinking about that. Maybe humidity is not so bad after all, <laughs> but um, stay tuned. I do have that video for you about that campground and uh, leaving and where I ended up and some good information and talks and stuff on that. We have a meet and greet. I'm doing a free meet and greet for all of my viewers who welcome to come. It's free of charge. It is Wednesday, May 18th near Tierras, New Mexico. 
at Oak, I think it's Oak Flats picnic area. I rented a group picnic area for all of us to keep it free for everybody. It is from noon to three, Wednesday, May 18th. I will put more information in the video description with a, a GPS coordinate to help you navigate. And what else? I think that's all I have. Oh, it's my five-year patron anniversary. So I want to say a special thank you to patrons. It takes all of you to keep this channel alive. And uh, thanks to patrons, I am able to keep making free videos for everybody to enjoy and to make a living out of sharing my life, which is an honor and a privilege. So thank you, thank you, thank you, patrons. And to celebrate my five-year anniversary on Patreon, I'm offering 15% off to anyone who joins for a year. That's good for current patrons as well as new patrons. Anybody who changes their monthly subscription to a, an annual subscription, prescription subscription, will get 15% off. We're also going to be doing some celebrations and prizes and honors and awards and things like that in May. So, uh, if you've been thinking about joining Patreon, now might be a good time. Thank you all so much. It takes all of you to keep this channel alive. So thank you. I appreciate you. You all mean so much to me. And I will see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, be safe. I hope this was helpful. Oh, leave your tips below. If you guys have any tips or resources that I haven't mentioned, leave them below. Do hashtag fire safety and leave your tip below to help other people in case I miss something. All right. And the last one is be kind. I'll see you soon. Thanks for being here.